Hello, everyone. You are not used to hearing this voice in the introduction of your Cultivate Women's Podcast. I know this is a male, but I'm allowed here. I am Jordan's husband, Trey, and I actually wanted to find my way into this podcast because I've wanted to anyways. But also, I think it's really important to have an interview, just ask you guys questions, what you're most excited about, because as of right now, we are five days yeah. away from oh, the first man. ever Cultivate Women's Conference, the whole theme being New Mercies. So I want to interview you guys, kind of get your perspective. Hopefully, these are people, we're going to upload this right away, so people getting ready for the conference, driving to the conference, they're processing what this conference is going to be all about. So I would say the first question to both of you, Jordan Shelby. Okay. Thanks again for letting me on your podcast. <laughs> Why a conference? Um, well, honestly, I feel like that's just something that the Lord has placed on my heart like for a while now. Um, but I, it was, and I kind of talk about this in my message, and so I'm not going to give away too much, but um, I had had the calling to women's ministry for a really long time that I that I ignored, um, and little parts of that calling, like God revealed to me, and one of them being this about leading a women's conference, but I was never in a place to even put that into play because I was never following his original calling to begin with, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to be ministering. So. Yeah, I wasn't like actually leading in like women's ministry. So you were helping with I our children's because yeah. being a church plant, we just that's where you had to be to yeah. help us out. What about you, Shelby? Um, well, I'm just excited to be a part of it. I think that that like being a part of a women's ministry is something that I think that I've kind of struggled with from like graduating from college and kind of finding my place in this world as a woman. I think that that's something that I never really like thought of. And then all of a sudden I was just like married and like considered like a pastor's wife. And so it was something that I kind of had to like jump into. But I think that being a part of the women's ministry at our church and like being able to like do the podcast and lead with Jordan has been really helpful for me just as a woman and like a woman in Christ. I think that has really like given me the opportunity to grow and then also be able to walk alongside other women who are kind of going through the same thing that I went through trying to find my place. Um, so I'm excited for the conference because I feel like we've done a really good job at marketing it to all women, um, not just like married with kids or older, like it's every, it's right. for everyone. And mm -hmm. I think that that's something that we really uh, have been intentional about that we really want yeah. to reach all women. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, what's encouraging about this is you guys have had uh, a lot of good comments uh, through your podcast, like interaction. So it's gonna be fun for you two to actually see listeners in the audience live mm -hmm. and like see the reactions in real time, be able to talk. So I think that'll be fun. You're, you're able to see in reality what's kind of been happening virtually. Yeah. When did you guys start the podcast? February? February. We yeah. released our first So episode. almost a full year. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, a couple more questions. So I'm excited because when we started our church in, uh, man, 2016, like I would have never thought that, you know, even just we're coming up on our four year birthday. The day of the conference will be yeah. our four yeah, year crazy. anniversary. It wasn't planned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize that when we had picked the date, but it was like, oh, yeah. Wow. This is really cool. And so what's cool about it is I would have never known by the fourth year we would have already had enough women power i was gonna say manpower women power to like have our own conference so right that's definitely something that's always been in the vision to do something big like that mm -hmm. so um for those especially who are considering going or on their way to go right now what are some of the value that you look to bring for this conference specifically like with new mercies and the breakouts or whatever what are some things you want people to know about it yeah i think that a big part is around the whole theme of new mercies and that's kind of why we picked it is because we're in this time of year where it's the new year and people um so often get in the like thought process it's like okay now is my time to like do all the things that i want to do or change all the things i want to change um and so we want them to know that like it's not just about like january like god has mercy for us all year long when we when he calls us into new callings and new passions and um, just reveals things to us it happens all year long it's not this one time that we have this ability like we want to encourage um, the women to to just follow God's leading all throughout the year yeah I think that's good I feel like even by January 10th 
people are already feeling yeah. burnt yeah. out, discouraged. They messed up their reading plan already. Mm -hmm. Right. So you even need it even just 10 days into the new year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And just focus around the idea that God, I mean, the truth that God has grace and mercy for you. Even when 10 days in, you've already messed up your reading plan. Like, right. It, it doesn't matter if it's January 10th or December 10th, you know. Mm -hmm. so. so tell me, Shelby, about your breakout. So are yeah. you're the one starting out, right? Uh, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I think so. On yeah. Saturday morning, there's yeah. going to be – it's it's the it's the Q&A podcast, which mm -hmm. will be recorded on to here later. Mm -hmm. And then after that is your breakout. Yeah, so. passion and purpose, which is something I'm really excited to talk about um, just because it's something that I struggled with a lot. Again, like – during that period of my life where I graduated college, I didn't really know where I fit in, just in this world in general. Um, so yeah, it's just about like pursuing God's purpose for your life and understanding what that is. Um, and then um, using your passion to do that and how you can do that in any stage of your life, any season of your life. Ultimately, God's purpose for us doesn't really change, um, but our passions can change and things can come um, up and opportunities can open up for us and God gives us the ability to use our passions to pursue his purpose in unique ways. We don't yeah. all have to do it the same way. And I think that that's something that's really beautiful. <coughs> and that's something that um, I think holds a lot of people back. Like they want to do stuff for, for God. They want to be um, like bold in their faith and, and make steps in that direction, but they don't know how, and they don't right. know like what's the right way to do it. And the cool thing about it is there's so many different ways to do it. Um, and God gives us uniquely and gives us opportunities to pursue that purpose differently. So I'm excited to talk about that. No, that'll be really good because, yeah. like, even just as a pastor, like, knowing our congregation and knowing what people do with so much of it is, first of all, they don't know their purpose. Like, yeah. we're in a very purposeless generation. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like, I mean, I can't imagine living without a purpose. And then so many people don't know their passion and they're yeah. too afraid to try new things. Like they've so, they're, you know, they so paralyzed themselves. Right. So. And I think a lot of times people think passion is like, it has to be something that I just like absolutely love. Mm. And it's like, passion is disguised as a lot of different things, I think. And I think, I don't know, you can look at the things that you are really good at and you can find a passion through doing that. Like there's yeah. so many different ways to find your quote unquote passion, I feel like. Right. No, that's good. Cause even like me as a seven, like I, I tend to, like, you know, I am passionate about what I'm passionate about, you know, like, yeah. so people think, oh, I have to have that much enthusiasm. Right. It could be discouraging to a lot of people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then Jordan, you're having the morning routine. That's right after that. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Um. So for me, just personally, I, as a new mom, I was kind of like stuck in this, um, mindset that it was like, I didn't have any time. Like I didn't have right. time to read God's word in the morning. I didn't have time to really like invest in my relationship with him, but also just in myself, like self care and making sure that I was healthy enough, um, both physically, emotionally, spiritually to pour out into these kids that I was trying to raise. And then of course, into Trey, who's my husband. But, um, so it, woo for woo. me, <laughs> it was finding that like, it was making that realization that my mornings were kind of everything. Like I went from sleeping in until the kids woke me up. And then it was like, I felt so scrambled and I was trying to um, get on top of things when I'm being needed and pulled out in every direction. And so for me, I, I made the realization that it was like, well, if I were just to wake up even one hour earlier or two hours earlier than my kids typically wake up, then I can make sure that I am, investing in myself and in my relationship with him and then therefore I am just a, a more joyful person I'm um, I have his presence with me more throughout the day like I'm more in the mindset to pray to him throughout the day yeah. um, and to handle conflict and um, just disciplinary stuff that I have to deal with with the kids like I feel like I'm just an all-around better like mom and person when I really like have a good set morning routine and that's something that I want to help because I know that people across the board that that's something that we struggle with and I think we all often believe the lie I'm not a morning person you've always yeah. said that and I used to say that I used right. to be the one that claimed oh I'm not a morning person so I just can't do morning stuff um and I having now realized that I think that's wrong I think that we put ourselves in boxes and we think oh, I'm a night owl or I'm a morning person or I'm neither. I don't like staying up late, but I also don't like waking up early. Like I think when you train yourself, like when it's something that you value, yeah. um, you will make the commitment and you will do things. And then as the more you make it a habit, then obviously it just becomes second nature. And like now 
most times I don't need an alarm to wake up because my body just knows, okay, right. time to get up and this is what we're doing. Yeah. And the beautiful thing, I mean, you're the one who even motivated me to get up early, uh, earlier than what I normally do. But the beautiful thing too is with that morning time, you know, that changes around, you know, like sometimes it's nothing but reading the Bible. Other mm-hmm. times it's like, you know, reading scripture, but then praying a lot. So there's always grace and there is yeah. there's still diff like you know personalities you can right in. like you can still tailor it to what you want to do so like i personally like use that time in the beginning to like do my bible study and journal and pray um and then the second half of that i use to exercise because that's something right. that is makes me feel better like it helps me and so but not everyone needs to do that or or you know, it looks different for everyone. And there's yeah. just a variety of things that you can implement in your mornings that's going to help, I think, change like how the outcome of your day happens. And that's what I want to teach people. Awesome. And then Vicki Coates, who has, I've known my entire life, yeah. she's uh, ending it off, right? She's yes. capping it up, capping it off. Is mm-hmm. that the right phrase? <laughs> With uh, mercy for motherhood. And so her vantage point is she's, you know, empty nester now, mm-hmm. gone all the way through. And she's also a uh, all girl family. Yeah, she's got she's raised three girls who are now adults and have their own. So we have a lot to learn from kids. them. And so yeah, I'm really really excited for her to speak and just kind of um, share just her personal experience and how God has granted her new mercies in every season of motherhood. Um, and that looks like not like in the process of like starting your family like you don't have kids yet but this is what you know leading into that and then also all the way up until your kids are fully grown and so i feel like it's really gonna hit all generations too okay so shelby yeah you have one minute to convince somebody right oh now gosh. to go <laughs> I, uh, this... why should they go to the cultivate <laughs> women's conference january 10th and 11, the Friday night, Saturday morning. Why do they need to Is go? Timer? I'm looking at the timer. Oh, <laughs> Ready, set, go. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I think that... One of the things that I'm most excited about is that we're just getting a bunch of women together and it's just going to be a great time. Like, there's all of these cool things that we're going to learn um, and we're going to worship together um, and we're going to do craft together. But just in general, like, I feel that having a community of women that are close, that support you and encourage you um, in life and in God's word is so important. And I think that it's something that's like missing from a lot of people's lives, especially today. So I'm just excited to be able to give everyone the opportunity to meet new people and to hopefully cultivate relationships with these women that will carry them through the year um, so that they can be encouraged and pour into each other um, just through life seasons and all of that. With 10 seconds to spare. Great job. Yeah. That's great. People need to know the power of proximity. Just you guys yeah. all gathering there and the spirit being there, it's going to be really encouraging. Cool. So Jordan, 30 seconds. Oh what would you add to that one, well, that 50 second version? Maybe she should get 40 because it's like rollover seconds. <laughs> Can I add her 10 seconds? She didn't yeah. Use. You have 40 seconds. Why else should people go if there's any other reason and go? Um, I think there's a common misconception when it comes to women's ministry that people think, oh, I have to be married to be a part of it or mm. I have to have kids to be a part of it. And I think that that's so wrong and we miss out on such vital like friendships and mentorships when we put ourselves, like when we put it in that box. Like we want our women's ministry to range from um, high school seniors like all the way through the college phase and the newly married and without kids and then having kids and empty nesters and all of that. Like we want every generation to be a part of that because it's so important for the older generations to be pouring into the younger generations Mm -hmm. to learn and get that wisdom and there's younger stuff like there's the younger generation that has a lot that we could teach the older generation Mm -hmm. too and i think that we miss out on such a cool opportunity when we isolate you know that Okay, that was also 50 seconds. So you guys matched each other. Cool. Well, awesome. Well, we're super pumped to be able to be a part of this. I will be there, but in the background, I'll wear all black so I hide in the shadows as I take video He's of gonna all this. He's going to make a really awesome recap video for oh, us. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no pressure. And a really awesome promo video for next year. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. So, hope you guys come. This was a shorter podcast. Thanks for letting me be a part of it. Um, yeah, I think it'll be good. I believe what God is. I believe God's going to, I don't know, bring encouragement to a lot of ladies, bring, uh, you know, a new sense of community, even within the life of our own church. Mm-hmm. It's going to be good. And I, it's fun to watch you two grow. And as you step out and another 
level of leadership. It's good stuff. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and do your little ending. I don't know what you guys do, even though I listen to all of them. You gotta. You don't have a formal ending. Our, like a, well, our ending the over the music's laugh. starting to play, and, and then you like, laugh. Who's gonna end this? And then we <laughs> laugh, and then you cut it out later. So <laughs> that's pretty much. All right. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what we did. <laughs>